So I'm Simon Wollstonecroft, a.k.a. Funky Si, and I've got that name uh, a long time ago from Johnny Marr, from the Smiths. He, he gave me that nickname because I like funk. <laughs> Hi, uh, we're Hot Minute and I'm Keely and I sing. I'm Bella and I play guitar. I'm Courtney and I play the keyboards synth. Yeah, I'm a drummer and I've been playing drums still in a band called San Pedro, a new band at the moment. But uh, I first started playing on holiday with mum and dad. I was lucky enough to go to Estoril in Portugal when I was 10. But I didn't get my first drum kit until I was uh, 15 or 16 when I was at Altry Young Grammar with Ian Brown and John Squire from the Stone Roses. <laughs> um, but we formed a band pretty early on and we've been together for about five or six years. Mm -hmm. And then one fateful night in Weatherspoons. I came along. <laughs> John Square and I started to follow uh, The Clash around. They were a huge band, you know, in the late 70s and early 80s. But I really loved The Clash and so did he. I then joined The Fall for 11 years. Uh, Mark East Smith's Band of Merry Men. I'm not so merry but a lot of the time. I had a great time. And Mark, Mark East Smith was really good to me and I liked him and he liked me. Uh, certainly in the first period of the band, the first five years, six years, and it kind of went downhill a bit. After the disappointment of uh, turning down the fall and then watching their career just go skyward so quickly, it, I, I wanted to get in the band again and try it again. And Marky e. Smith, he must have noticed me, and came up to me after the gig and said, Hey, cop, come and, can I come and jump in the band with you? We had, a, we had a higher van, a Salford Vyham van. <laughs> and, uh, uh, basically, uh, he said, I want you to join the band now. Do you fancy it, Cot? Well, when we first got together, we didn't actually write or play any music for a good six or seven months. Yeah. Because it was like, right, start from square one. This time it's going to be right, and this time it's going to be done the right way. No matter how long it takes, and believe me, it takes a long time. <laughs> Literally everything that we'd already done was just yeah, it was all shoved aside. We didn't say anything to anybody because we just wanted to give it the best shot as possible. We obviously the deal if you want to be if you want to be in a band and you want to do it forever, you want to be signed. Big sales figures, those papers, you know, every week, all of them, and uh, I don't know. If you, were in a, if you wanted to be in a band when you were younger, how would you go about it? You'd buy the enemy and there'd be drummer wanted or guitarist, you know, in the back column. It just wasn't about the latest things. You know, you get that on Gumtree now, don't you? You know, bands wanted column, all that kind of thing. But there's so many of them now. But back then there was only that. Social media oh. is the focal point of everything. It yeah. definitely plays one of the main parts, massively. Especially with like our Instagram and stuff, we've made that a main focus point on our particular campaigns for like our singles and stuff. We're very like, we want to make it something visual to look at because it's, now it's like... It's a brand. Yeah. We like to give it its own like world almost. It's one of them, it's now that social networking is now that tool that people use to connect. It gets people signed. It gets people, people are at the point now because of social media and streaming and all that, that they don't need a record label. They don't need promotion. They don't need any of it because it is very, very easy to do it yourself. Whether you do it yourself and you're any good, that's something different. <laughs> but it's very easy to do it yourself. And if you do it yourself and you're talented and you do it all right, there's a 100% chance of making oh, money. Yeah. So you, like social media has given people that platform that you didn't have 20 years ago because obviously the internet wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's easier now because there's more ways to generate. There's more ways, yeah. That too. And yeah. it's like people who are completely independent, no label, no nothing, manage it all themselves. Like um, AJ Tracy, they have their own career. They keep all that money because they don't have yeah. their hands in every pot. So that all comes back to them. So he's very successful. And there's loads of people like that that you've never heard of because it's all to do with streaming and how it changed the industry. So like you could like if someone pops off on Spotify and they're getting hits like no other, they'll get bashed around every Spotify playlist yeah. and the more traction it gets, the more it'll pick up. So there's people who make careers not even playing just from Spotify. So in that respect, 
yeah, it's a lot easier. But to do like the old school model of get signed to a label and get big, probably not, because obviously they've got a very specific idea of what they want now. No, if you're good enough, you'll be successful. If you put the time in behind it, I think it still applies today yeah. that I'm not relying on gimmicks and things. You know, if you put the time in in that rehearsal room, and you can do it if you're good enough. I still believe it. And I know there's a million other things you can do, you know, uh, but uh, I still believe you can do it.